Explore Physical Wellness Most of our conceptions regarding the idea of wellness ultimately begin and end with our physical bodies. This should not come as a surprise because we need our bodies to experience the world. This is our base for experiencing reality. We see, hear, touch, taste, and smell things within the confines of our body. All the stimuli the world sends us moment by moment is filtered through this physical machinery called our body. This is a biological fact. This is why we are very attached to the state of our body. Now, unfortunately, we live in a time in human history where our physical bodies are under tremendous stress. There is all sorts of stuff in our food. There are all sorts of chemicals in the water that we drink. Don't even get me started talking about the air. In fact, in certain parts of the world, people live in a toxic stew. There are tons of chemical dangers that take the form of physical inputs that directly affect the body. Now, the impact is not immediate. It's not like you're exposed to the stuff once and automatically you die or you develop some sort of very visible allergy. It usually doesn't work that way, but when you are consistently exposed to these chemicals as well as to these environmental factors, eventually your body starts to break down. Medical wellness has two dimensions here. First, you are resistant to disease. Your body has evolved an immune system. Generally speaking, if your immune system is up to the job, it can take care of a lot of the microbes that you come into contact with. If you are eating the right stuff and you get decent exercise and everything is in proper balance, your body normally is equipped to handle a wide range of viruses and microbes. It makes quick work of these diseases. Now, due to lifestyle issues as well as environmental factors, if your system starts to break down, you become less resistant to disease. The traditional Western medical response to the situation, of course, is to bomb your system with chemicals and antibiotics. While this approach often makes the disease go away, it often creates more problems than it solves. First, there's the issue of dependency. If you keep getting exposed to antibiotics, you eventually build a certain level of tolerance. If you fail to use antibiotics correctly, eventually they stop working for you. The other dimension to medical wellness is resistance to autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases involve your body's anti-illness responses. When you develop a fever, for example, the heat generated is actually your own body seeking to protect itself. The same applies to certain types of inflammation. When these processes go haywire, your body starts acting against itself. Of course, the most extreme example of this is lupus. As terrifying as that condition is, there are lower level versions of autoimmune disease that people suffer from. And unfortunately, too many doctors are too eager to dismiss autoimmune dysfunctions as psychosomatic or purely environmental in nature. What they are really doing is just they're taking a wild guess to explain it away instead of looking at it from a holistic perspective. It really is too bad because physical wellness must involve the body's resistance to autoimmune diseases, which in turn requires greater sensitivity to how our body's internal processes normally protect us from the disease as well as some environmental inputs. Understand that your lifestyle plays a big role in your ability to resist disease as well as the healthy operation of your autoimmune system. They go hand in hand. It really all boils down to your inputs. I'm not in any way dismissing the importance of genetic predisposition, but note that your environment plays a big role in this. Look at your genetic predisposition as essentially setting limits regarding your medical wellness. It also establishes certain sensitivities, but everything else is really chosen by you. You decide where you live. You decide how much air you get, how exposed you are to light at certain times of the day. You also get a tremendous amount of choice regarding the pollutants that you can easily perceive. You have a lot more skin in the game than you give yourself credit for. Unfortunately, a lot of people think that if they have an autoimmune disease or their disease resistance goes down, that there's really not much they can do about it. It's as if their medical destiny is set in cement somehow, some way. This is not true. While at some level, there are certain factors you just cannot control. By and large, you can contain how bad things could get. This might not seem like much of a consolation, but it's actually a big deal because you have a lot more control over your physical wellness than you give yourself credit for. By simply being mindful of the impact your environment has on your physical health, you can start engineering your environment to lead to better health outcomes. Again, I'm not saying that this completely discounts disease or takes runaway autoimmune responses completely, but there is a lot more control here. The rise of lifestyle diseases. Believe it or not, in the Western world, our big challenge does not come from communicable diseases. Our biggest challenge doesn't involve communicable diseases. Long-time scourges like polio, smallpox, cholera, dysentery, and the like have been effectively dealt with through large-scale government health and hygiene programs. Even malaria, dengue, and other insect or vector-borne diseases have been effectively managed. 
The biggest challenge in the Western world involves lifestyle diseases. These are harder to get a hold of primarily because they are rooted in people's habits. For example, type 2 diabetes is causing all sorts of health problems in the West because there is an obesity epidemic going on. In a way, places like Western Europe and the United States are victims of their own success. As food becomes more plentiful, diverse, and affordable, more people get to eat more food. And as life becomes more comfortable, where you don't have to necessarily roll up your sleeves to work or work up a sweat just to earn money, is leading to a more sedentary lifestyle with an abundance of calories that has led to an explosion in type 2 diabetes. This is an environmental disease as well. If your environment involves daily physical activity as well as more nutritious inputs in the form of high-fiber foods and fresh fruits and vegetables, your risk of coming down with type 2 diabetes drops significantly. Closely related to this trend is the increase of cardiovascular diseases. Heart disease is consistently near the top five causes of death in the West. Again, this is traced to the fact that people have a lot more access to food due to low cost and variety, mix this with low activity levels, and it's no surprise that a lot of people have clogged arteries. Finally, colon cancer and other types of cancer related to diet and lifestyle are on the upswing. Again, this all arises from that unholy marriage between cheap access to calories and a more sedentary lifestyle. These diseases would really not be as big as they are if our concept of medical wellness is more well-rounded. Our resistance to disease as well as our autoimmune processes would have easily protected us if we had adopted the right preventative health lifestyles. I'm going to go into this quite a bit in video 9 going forward.